My name is Dr. Vijay Rao. I am a rheumatologist working in Manipal Hospital, Bangalore. I understand you are watching this video because either you are in a lot of joint pains and you do not understand why this is happening or you have already seen many number of doctors and you have still not improved upon with your treatments. It is quite frustrating and I can completely understand that none of the treatments have worked or none of the doctors are able to diagnose what the symptoms are and tell you what the disease is. In the next few minutes in the video, I shall give you a general overview about what arthritis is, what are the different types of arthritis and how uh, does the rheumatologist go about in treating these conditions. Now, who am I and why are you listening to me? So, like I said, I am a rheumatologist who I deal with conditions causing joint pain and swelling. I have had about 12 years of experience in this field and majority of the time I spend in England training and treating this disease. Worked in one of the world renowned centers uh, where some of these diseases were actually founded and treatments were invented and a lot of research trials were conducted on these diseases. Hence, there is quite a bit of experience in uh, me giving this uh, video lecture. Uh, and also, I love teaching patients because I strongly believe that empowering uh, the knowledge to the patients will actually make the disease. So, uh, with this short introduction, I just want to tell you that what is arthritis? Arthro means joint, itis means heat, uh, pain and swelling. Let us just look at this uh, uh, normal joint. This normal joint you actually see the two bones and the tip of the bones are covered with cushion like structures called cartilages which uh, protect the bones from friction and all the muscles and the ligaments are the supporting structures which attach to the bones. Then the whole thing is actually covered by a nice bag called capsule if you see here. The inner lining of this bag is called synovium which is actually a protective covering for the bag. Uh, so, this is a normal joint, all right. So, in arthritis what happens? There are two groups of arthritis. One is which happens in the age of 20 to 40 years, an immune related problem which is mainly genetic. The second one is which you see in 40 to 50 years and above and related to over usage which we call as osteoarthritis. So, if we see the we saw the normal joint, then we see an immune mediated arthritis that is inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis or uh, ankylosing spondylitis or psoriatic arthritis or lupus if you are having any of these conditions in which if we see the normal bone, now the normal bone is actually eroded, the protective cartilage like cushions at the end of the bone is lost and hence the bone friction, friction is more. Uh, the, all these supporting structures called the ligaments are swollen which you see the ragged lines around the sides and the capsular bag is actually lost and there is a lot of fluid which is produced by the synovium if you remember the inner lining of the, uh, the capsular bag. And in the inflammatory arthritis if you see that is the rheumatoid arthritis, this x-ray was in 1997 within an year you already see the bone damage and within one more year that is in two years you already see the bone being lost all right. So, that is uh, the severe the dangerous form of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. The second category of osteoarthritis as I said is more uh, age and um, activity related. So, in the activity related arthritis you see that mainly the cartilage or the protective cushion beneath the uh, bones is lost leading to bone rubbing on each other and spiky bone structures which is damaging the joint capsule and the capsule is lost uh, producing uh, fluid. If you see the fluid collection in this type of arthritis is much less compared to uh, the rheumatoid arthritis. And if I want to show you an x-ray, this is where we are talking about osteoarthritis where the cartilage and the joint space between the two bones is lost 
the bone sitting on the bone and this is a typical knee osteoarthritic knee which happens in old age and also due to over activity. If you see the other knee it is also heading towards this, but slightly less and when you see the same uh, x-ray for this person the leg looks like this. The normal straight leg is lost this is more like a bow, bow, bow like structure and uh, uh, this is what happens with osteoarthritis and this is again uh, an x-ray if you see initially early stages of osteoarthritis within 4 years uh, it is narrowed and within 7 years it is completely narrowed. So, it is within 7 years it is taken its full toll. And the same osteoarthritis you see in an elderly um, uh, gentleman's hand uh, which uh, shows lot of nobular swellings due to um, bone damage. So, in general these are the two broad categories of uh, arthritis that is osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Now, when should you see a rheumatologist? If you have pain in a single joint or multiple joints without having any injury or if you have swelling in the joints mainly in the hands, feet and knees and you do not recall injuring yourself and this has been going on for more than 6 weeks and also if you have any fever and other symptoms such as skin rashes, uh, ulcers. Uh, and you do not find a cause, your family physician or GP or general physician does not find a cause, then you definitely need to see a rheumatologist. This is also more than so if you um, have trouble with uh, activities of uh, day to day life. So, and also you need to see the rheumatologist if you have back pain, especially in the lower back or neck, more in the mornings with lot of stiffness and if you do not recall injuring your back. This is especially a disease called ankylosing spondylitis, where if you see this bone, this is the sacrum bone and this is your spine bone and the attachment of the sacrum bone to your hip bone are called sacroiliac joints and the sides of this disease get inflamed in a condition called ankylosing spondylitis. This usually affects uh, men mainly, but having said that it can happen in females as well. It is more common in 20 to 40 year age group, more commonly seen in smokers. This is mostly a genetic disease and a lifelong disease as well um, similar to rheumatoid arthritis. The difference between rheumatoid arthritis and this is rheumatoid arthritis affects more in the other joints where ankylosing spondylitis is mostly in your spine and hips. Now, who gets arthritis? The common mistake which people think is arthritis happens only in old age. In fact, I in the initial video uh, 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 part of this video I told you that the age related arthritis is mainly osteoarthritis. Other than that it is the rheumatoid arthritis which affects the young people and even ankylosing spondylitis mainly affects the young people. So, age is definitely not a criteria. In fact, arthritis affects small kids as well and males and females are equally affected. What causes arthritis? There are multiple factors, mostly it is an element of chance, what we call as destiny in to put it in layman language. If you look at the scientific cause of it, mostly it is genetic and lifestyle induced such as smoking, sedentary lifestyle. There are certain triggers which can cause this, as I said one is smoking, other is certain viral infections third is pregnancy, fourth is stress or a physically demanding job. Um, so, that those are the main causes. Broadly the cause is still unknown and most of these are in the research phase yet. Now, what is the outlook for the arthritis? I mean most people with arthritis I can tell about my patients about 80 to 90 percent or even more of them lead a normal life. Uh, and they do not have any major mobility problems. Um, that the problem comes only if the treatment is delayed and the diagnosis is delayed when it leads to serious disabilities. How arthritis is diagnosed is a million dollar question because most general physicians and family physicians rely on tests to be diagnosed uh, to be able to diagnose arthritis. Out of experience I can say that 
diagnosis in rheumatology that is rheumatic problems is a combination of symptoms, examination and tests. So, it is not only tests. So, that is the reason you see have to see a rheumatologist who is specialized in these immune mediated disorders as opposed to orthopedics who rather deal with the surgical aspects of it. So, the rheumatologist will actually ask you symptoms which you have to mainly look out for pain and swelling in the joints, multiple joints mainly involving hand and feet. The rheumatologist confirms this on examination and there are certain other findings such as rashes, mouth ulcers occurring in certain forms of arthritis. What tests are there for arthritis in to help diagnosis? Lab tests will actually establish the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis and actually tell us whether it is severe or mild. It will also check for inflammatory markers and it will help us to give a baseline estimation of liver and kidney functions for us to be able to start treatment. And in order to see on the x-ray the arthritis must be at least for few years. Uh, in a sense, if you want to wait for the x-ray to show changes, you have already missed the boat because it is too late. These days newer imaging techniques have come like ultrasound scan and MRI which detect the arthritis at a very early stage and hence your rheumatologist will be able to help you about this. So, I spoke about general awareness about arthritis, uh, who you need to see to uh, be able to diagnose this condition. I spoke about typical symptoms in arthritis, I spoke about tests. Now, the important part of it, what treatments are there for arthritis? To be honest, there is no single cure for arthritis diseases. We do a combination of things for the patients to feel better. Research has led to a lot of improvement in the last decade and to be honest there are a lot of options for rheumatic diseases as opposed to in the past. The common myth that there are no treatments and patients will suffer is completely wrong. With the right kind of treatment given at the right kind of time, patients can lead a normal life and some of my patients are actually marathon runners. Treatment must be tailored to the needs of each person. There is nothing called a blanket treatment. So, do not compare your treatment with another rheumatic disease patient because his disease extent and severity is different from yours. Always the risks and benefits have to be weighed. Even a small intervention such as walking on the road can have risks and for that fear we do not stop walking on the road. And I commonly tell this to my patients that at the time we start treatment, the benefits of the treatment are far more than the risks of side effects. The treatment mainly is in the form of uh, medications. Medications come either in the form of tablets or injections. It is important to start medications as soon as possible because the sooner it is started, the more effective it will be. In fact, these days it is said that if we ever start treatment for rheumatoid arthritis within 3 months of diagnosis, then it is possible that we could stop treatment after 2 to 3 years. And this is definitely true, research is strongly backing this. Hence, it is important that it is diagnosed sooner and treated sooner. With treatment, only minor side effects can happen, but major side effects are very, very less. In the tablet form of treatment, uh, it is usually 4 to 6 tablets together we start. Tablets work slowly, they work in about 3 to months, 4 months time and it is not immediate benefit the patient sees. So, it is vitally important that you do not stop treatment, uh, that it is not working within a few weeks or months time. You give yourself 3 to 4 months time and consult a rheumatologist before stopping treatment. Because if you stop treatment, then your immune system will become resistant to these tablets and there won't be any treatment left. So, uh, in terms of tablets, there are three types. One is the painkillers, which is used only for short term to control pain and if taken long term, then it causes serious side effects. And the tablets which we use long term are uh, used for rheumatoid arthritis and different inflammatory arthritis such as SLE, vasculitis, psoriatic arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis. Uh, we do need blood tests frequently and at the start 
uh, before starting these tablets uh, just to monitor if they are causing any side effects. The newer class of drugs which are uh, thankfully due a byproduct of the recent research are called biologic agents. These act on the cellular, cellular level which blocks the messages from white blood cells which cause inflammation. So in effect, biologic agents are like drones which attack specific houses with terrorists rather than the tablets which are like missiles which attacks the whole city. So what the biologic does is it reduces the damage other than what is needed and hence other side effects such as gastritis, vomiting sensation and all those are prevented. So they are quite specific drugs. The benefit of biologic agent is it works very well and 100% response with these biologic agents and it works sooner. And a research has shown that if it started sooner in certain group of patients, especially in ankylosing spondylitis where it causes inflammation in the spine, then the damage to the spine and the hip joints can be minimized thereby preventing surgical uh, interventions that is it prevents surgery at a later stage. It gives back the quality of life, the quality of life is certainly more on the biologic agents that is you can go back to your normal life and do whatever you like to do as you were doing before. Tablets give quality of life about 60 to 70 percent but the biologic agents give quality of life nearly 100 percent. So it's definitely worth investing in this and I really tell my patients that especially if you have lost your job because of arthritis, you do consider biologic agents although it is slightly more expensive than the tablets. The only risk about biologic agents is the slightly higher chance of infection as compared to tablets. Uh, but this risk is obviously discussed with your rheumatologist who thinks that your disease is severe enough to start these agents. A lot of patients ask me about the role of physiotherapy. Bed rest is certainly not advised in this group of patients um, and exercises in water what we call as hydrotherapy is more beneficial than normal physiotherapy as it supports your weight and there is less pressure on bones, muscles and joints. Also physiotherapists will teach you specific exercises for muscle strengthening and stretching with ice and heat pack. Uh, which reduces inflammation. There is also a role for occupational therapy uh, who will teach you on advising on managing day to day tasks, pacing yourself uh, so that you do not feel rushed especially with joint pains to do the activities and choosing certain equipments or assist devices to help you deal with day to day activities with disabilities. The other important aspect a lot of patients ask is what food should I eat doctor? Uh, generally I say that this is not a diet related disease but you do have to remember certain points. It is important not to be overweight for this disease for any type of arthritis and hence you should limit your calorie intake if you think you are not able to exercise. For this reason I advise patients to stop taking sugar items and fat items. So taking any of the dairy fat or animal fat will increase the weight and also animal fat and protein might increase the inflammation. Um, and vegetables almost pretty much anything can be eaten. In terms of lifestyle I already uh, mentioned that smoking is a big risk factor so because smoking causes changes in the genes and it causes a chemical uh, process called citrullination uh, which helps in production of antibodies um, which are chemicals attacking our own joints. So smoking should be definitely be stopped and even passive smoking is bad. As far as possible reducing stress getting good night sleep is much beneficial for arthritis and limiting alcohol intake as it can interfere uh, with the tablets we give. So to summarize what I can say is it is not the end of the world that you got this arthritis. It is vitally important that you see a right doctor which should be a rheumatologist to help you uh, in diagnosing this condition and choosing a right treatment for you. There is no single 
uh, one particular test which enables which will help in diagnosis so it's a combination of expertise from the rheumatologists the tests and the uh, x-rays or the mri or the ultrasound and once the diagnosis is done time should not be wasted on starting the right kind of treatment certainly biologic agents are definitely beneficial in controlling the disease in much extent and giving the quality of life back with this note um, i will actually say goodbye to you and wishing you all the best um, and do take care of yourself thank you